Today I'm going to show you a yard that I designed as the landscape designer. This is East Nashville, densely populated place. This yard, the client wanted certain specific things, very interesting. Sanctuary, did not want to see your neighbors. Has dogs, wanted a dog friendly place, doesn't want flowers, so it's all foliage and texture. I'm going to show you how I solved these design challenges. As you can see, the perimeter of this yard, which is not very large, is lined with a variety of tall, narrow, mostly evergreen trees. There's one that is not. But this gives this beautiful screening effect that we have here. We've got green giant arborvitae, emerald arborvitae, cryptomeria radicans. I like that one better than Yoshino because it doesn't bronze out in the winter. And beautiful magnolias back there. That's called Alta, A-L-T-A, very beautiful. This gave this sort of green wall, interesting texture and foliage and the sense of privacy. It really encloses this garden room. In front of this green wall, I've placed plants of interest and almost everything, because this is such a small yard, it's like everything becomes almost a specimen. No mass plantings here. Everything is a one-off. For example, this Japanese maple is a dwarf variety. It's greening up now. It's brilliant red in the earlier spring. This is called Shana and it's a lovely thing. It just basically doesn't get a lot bigger than this, just a little denser and spreads out. Below that is my current total favorite creeping juniper. I love this plant. This is called Golden Pacific. Blue Pacific's been around for a long time. This is a newer one. I've also seen it sold as all gold. Either way, what a great looking plant. In the winter, it is bronzy yellow. It is just the most like amber. It's beautiful. And then in the, in the growing season, it gets these delightful yellow tips on it. It'll get yellower as the summer progresses here. Then, you know, once again, another specimen. This is a weeping deodar dwarf called Feelin' Blue. And blue it is. Lovely texture and form to this, particularly contrasted against the very vertical backdrop um, this is a little dwarf cami cypress, which will just make a little ball around here. This is a coral bark maple, and it's placed here because it's against a wall of very dark green. And in the winter, when the leaves drop off of this and those brilliant coral stems show up like beacons against that dark green, it's really stunning to look at from out of the house, out the window. It's really quite the showcase. This whole feature over here, I mentioned she has dogs, and a lot of the density of this planting here is so the dogs have hidey holes and cool shady places to hang. But this is basically the water dish, but done in a really beautiful way. This is what's called a pondless waterfall. There's a receptacle down below that big flat rock, and that hole is actually natural in that rock, believe it or not. And it also adds a really interesting feature to the garden. Another thing about this whole lot is that it was flat and I brought in soil and built up this, this berm here and beds so that there was variation so that you get a lot more sense of depth and, and interest in the yard. This is such a cool little pine. This is called Scudic. It's a Banksiana pine which usually goes much further north but it loves to crawl over rocks like this. Once again, you can see the beautiful textures in the background, which really adds a lot of interest year round. The magnolia leaves contrasted with that's an Emily Bruner holly and the, the cryptomeria and the green giant arborvitae. This client also has these magnificent big containers. These are actually copper and they're, <laughs> they're I think they're from Thailand. They're batik dye pots. They're big enough that you can grow really quite striking things. This is a white pine that is a light green in the summer and turns brilliant golden tips in the winter. It's called winter gold. Very, very, very pretty plant. Um, and it's a lovely contrast, once again, to the very dark uh, green in the back. This whole area over here is, is a deep part of the bed. And this is really dog central back here. A great place for them to hang out. This is a lovely little camisiparis called Split Rock. I love the blue foliage on this and the, the kind of frilliness of it. It's really an unusual looking plant. You'll notice that most everything that we've done back here 
is evergreen, but there are things that are not. For example, this bank of bushes here is a native holly, Ilex verticillata, called winterberry holly. This is red sprite, doesn't get real tall. It's just starting to set berries now. There's a male in there called Jim Dandy, which pollinates it. In the winter, this drops all its leaves, but the red berries really show up. Behind it is a tree that's way bigger than I thought it would get. So, you know, live and learn. We may have to do something about that at some point, but right now it looks pretty cool. That is a meta sequoia called a Dawn Redwood. And this variety is called Ogun, which actually means gold in Japanese. And that's supposed to be a slow grower, but it's uh, quadrupled in size in four years, so. We have another Japanese maple over here that sort of complements but doesn't copy the coral bark. This is one called Bihu, rounder, shorter, and in the, in the uh, winter, drops its leaves and gets these beautiful yellow to golden yellow to coral orange twigs. Really striking, very beautiful. And I should mention that behind all of this are evergreens. There's another cryptomeria and there are Nellie Stevens hollies back in this corner. So when all of this goes down, there's still a green wall to uh, continue the privacy of this backyard. Look at these junipers. This one is really common. It's called Dobbs Frosted, and it's one of my favorites. But my gosh, look how big it's gotten. This is how they do when they're happy. And it's really, it's got these amazing little yellow stems on it, which give it this interesting, almost bitoned coloring. Very distinctive. And once again, a nice feathery kind of foliage, lovely contrast, both in color and form with the other things around it one of which is this weeping atlas cedar. This is Cedrus atlantica glaucopendula. So people have these all over the place, but it's just such a lovely specimen plant and this kind of powdery blue-green foliage on here is really terrific. I wanted to mention the magnolia behind it. That one is called K. Paris, um, and it is a, an offspring of Little Gem, which everybody's familiar with. And it's supposed, it, that thing was, four years ago, it was six feet tall. So I guess it's a pretty quick grower, I would say. You can see, here's another one of these wonderful pots she's got. And this is a tree form mugo pine in here. Really, really handsome. Nice ball shape with these spready things and these verticals around it. This last tree on this side leading back over to the exit gate is this is a lovely tree this is a virginia pine it's a native this particular variety is called weights golden and we keep it kind of pruned in a modified hindu pan so you can really see all kinds of structure this is the biggest container in the yard and it's a massive thing and we have a fern spray gold hemicyparis in here which we will keep pruned correct you know to uh balance correctly in the pot and i just love the way this sort of chartreuse and gold bounces off she's got this lovely kind of lilac color uh to her house paint and it, there's a really nice uh contrast here that works really well obviously containers are her thing she's got this succulent pot we put in for her she loves that too this is one of the few blooming things, and it's probably just about done. This is an Elysium, which is a, an American plant. This is a hybrid sort between a Mexican uh, species and the Elysium floridanum, which grows further south, but it's perfectly hardy here. This one is called Woodlander's Ruby, and it has these big star-shaped blooms and that then produce these seed pods. It's obviously a fertile hybrid and it blooms in the spring. It's a nice broad-leaved evergreen, and it sure seems happy here. This is a really unusual plant. This is a bald cypress, but it's a variety called Peve Minaret, and it is a dwarf for a bald cypress form, and it has these extremely dense, close ways of growing. Now, we put this in, it was quite small. This coming winter, I'm gonna prune it back to keep it tighter and make it uh, more the form I want. But for right now, it's doing this like this and it really fills this corner nice. It takes the curse off that corner of the house. One of her dogs loves to make 
tunnels in the grass. Where he lived before, he had a little hidey hole in this big grass clump. So when I put in this yard, I made a grass clump place for him. This is a miscanthus. This variety is Rigoletto. This is an evergreen. This is compacta hemiciparis, really beautiful. We keep this kind of open. Um, this was in a container for a long time, but we ended up putting it in the ground. In another container here, look at how good well this is doing. It's really nice. This is a weeping red Japanese maple called Red Dragon. And one of the things I like about this variety is that it keeps its red color really well over the course of the summer. A lot of red Jap maples tend to go dark green when it gets hot. This one keeps its color better than most, and it's certainly happy. One thing I would say is that we fertilize this one pretty heavily because with Hollytone, simply because in a pot, you know, it hasn't got a lot of foraging room for the roots, so we give it extra good culture. It, but it seems to certainly be thriving there, and it really fills up. And once again, that color looks so great against the house to my eye. It just really is a pleasing combination. Around this round flagstone patio, I wanted to repeat that elevation change that makes a yard so much more interesting than just a flat pallet. And so we built up this little berm, brought in some good soil, landscape mix, and put these evergreens in. This is another golden Pacific juniper. Look how happy it is. Shored it up with some interesting rocks, which is what I've done all over the place, just like at the waterfall. This, this is a dwarf white pine, eastern white pine, called Green Twist. Stays low, and you can see why it's called this. It's got these really interesting, the, the, the needles twist and turn, unlike just the straight species. So it adds this, once again, a really interesting textural quality to this whole area. But it's not going to get so tall that from the house it's going to block her view beyond to the rest of the yard. But it adds a sense of near and far to a small yard also. So it, it adds interest in that way. This is a dwarf blue spruce called Montgomery, or Montgomery blue. I've seen it called both things. And my gosh, what a color. Pretty spectacular. If you look, you've got blue, gold, and then this Kelly green. It's really quite, uh, quite the little showcase right here. So you can see, I think that we've solved most of the design issues that were brought up in putting this yard together. It is a sanctuary. It really gives you a feeling of privacy. It's lovely to look at four seasons of the year, and the dogs dig it. It's a really pleasing place to come to. It's been wonderful to see it unfold and grow since it was put in. And uh, everybody seems to be pretty happy, including the plants. For inspiring garden tours, growing tips, and garden projects, visit our website at volunteergardener.org or on YouTube at the Volunteer Gardener channel and like us on Facebook.